Hello and welcome to My Family Country Product, My Family Country Life. Excuse me, I'm getting things mixed up here. Uh, today we're making a video on uh, something we have to do living back here in the bush. Part of our lifestyle uh, series. We'll give you a chance to know what we actually go through here. I've only got one hand available, so I'm going to try to flip the screen around so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> He's laughing because I did that with my teeth. Okay, and I'm not on the, uh, the zoom this time. One thing you have to consider if you're going to live in the bush, a lot of people have this romantic idea of doing this. Live in the bush, live off the land, it's a wonderful thing. And it is, I'm not going to shortchange that at all. But one thing you have to remember when you live way off the beaten path is that you have to drag all your supplies in there. Especially if you're in a situation where the road is not open to regular traffic. Our road is not a year-round road. It was at one time, but nobody plows this in the winter. The, uh, the township, uh, or the province undesignated it, so the township does not do any upkeep, any plowing. So that means we have to get up and down this road. Today, we're bringing in some of the groceries. It takes a couple of loads usually. And we're going to start wandering up the road here and I'll keep talking about it because I don't want to just waste all your time here. Now, I'm following Wesley here of Amy 2 fame. So if anything falls off, I can tell him or I can pick it up myself and put it back on or carry it the rest of the way because uh, we don't want to lose food or other items. We also have to transport our uh, firewood this way. We haul it out of the bush on a toboggan in the winter. During the spring, oh, let's, let's finish talking about the winter first. Uh, right now, things have thawed and this is about to turn to mud, but uh, during the winter when the snow is deep, um, usually I get to post hole my way all the way out and basically the family herd goes in and out a couple of times and that establishes a trail about as wide as that toboggan and that allows us to move freely up and down this quarter mile that we have to traverse during the winter without the car. We usually walk single file and one thing we constantly think about which we don't have to do right now, is that our footsteps are grooming the trail. We're packing it down where we want it to, so we're watching where we put our feet. We want to make this path as usable as possible, because usually you don't get a snowstorm every day. Once we have it established, we often don't have to worry about it much for a week, and everything goes in and out pretty easily. Things are complicated after a storm. I do have snowshoes but they're kind of broken right now and I haven't been able to replace them or fix them. I tried fixing them but a, a thin metal doesn't work. It, uh, it lasts about a day. One trip up and down the road here and it's messed up. I've destroyed it. It's just, it just metal fatigue. It needs to be able to flex so I need something nylon or rubber or something, something that allows it to flex, like the original thing that actually broke. And then I'll probably get a year's worth of service out of it before it breaks again. Um, one thing I noticed, I give our native population some credit. They traveled with toboggans and snowshoes. And if you make a snowshoe trail, it's about as wide as a proper toboggan. So you got two guys, two or three guys beating down the trail in front and then somebody dragging a toboggan over it and a couple of people taking up the rear. You make a, a great path for traveling that route for uh, until the next time you have to have a storm. It flattens out pretty fast. And you travel single file in the snow because it takes a lot less energy to do that. You don't want to make the trail too wide. That being said, everything has to come in this way. 
because we can't drive the car in there. And if you think that's bad, that's not the worst. The worst is the spring. Because this road really turns into the most disgusting mud hole you have ever seen in your life. <laughs> it gets to the point where you can barely walk on it. You can barely walk on it. It, it sucks at your boots. It's almost quicksand in places. We try to walk on the edges then, but it's very difficult to carry things in and out at that point. Um, when it dries out some, it's good, but as long as there's any kind of a freeze-thaw cycle while it's mud, it gets, it gets goopier and goopier. The water, when it freezes, expands and pushes the, uh, the mud particles further apart. And if that's not the worst of it, there is always some bright light who will come in here with a 4x4 big truck and will plow these two massive trenches all the way down the road. Things that you're going to be avoiding with your car for most of the summer, trying not to break your suspension. I kind of wish they'd stay off it until it solids up, but uh, they're not likely to listen to me. The other thing that'll happen is some people like to go with their four-wheelers and they like the mud holes, they like to go muddy, and that's wonderful. I just wish they wouldn't do it on our road. They like to find a big puddle and start spinning out in it, making it deeper, and throwing muck all over the place, which is wonderful, except it digs a massive hole that either has to get filled by me so that I can use the road with my car later, or I hope that when we drag, when uh, the farmer drags it out, which he'll do once in a blue moon, because there are fields in the back there that he needs to get to, that it flattens out. It is a little frustrating, actually a lot frustrating, which is why I'm making a video about it. Other than that, when this dries out, this road is wonderful. We can drive right up to our little uh, hunt camp there and bring things in. That's the time when we like to get in building materials and whatever else that we need because it's a bummer having to carry it. We carry groceries, like I said, firewood. I also have to drag in the propane tanks this way. Now, yeah, I can carry the propane tanks physically, one in each hand, because I carry two at a time, but by the time I get from one end of this to the other, I feel like my arms are about eight inches longer than they were when I left. And it's exhausting to do that, especially if you got to make more than one trip. For example, the groceries here, we're going to be making more than one trip today. we got to make two trips. I'm watching my time a little. This little driveway marks about the halfway point. So we're going to get there. We're taking our time a little bit. I got groceries in one arm here, which is why I only got one hand, which is why I use my teeth to turn a little, because that's the camera here. Now I can physically do this, but my wife uh, getting stuff up and down this road, for example, if I got snowed in at work and she has to carry things in by herself, it is not easy. I guarantee you I'll hear about it afterwards too. And you know what? I don't blame her. Any packages through the mail, anything, it does not go all the way in here. Unless it comes UPS. That man who drives that UPS truck is the most wonderful delivery person in the world. He will get down this road in conditions you would not imagine. I can't imagine his boss likes him taking the truck down this road, <laughs> but you know what? He likes it and I'm happy. <laughs> he keeps me real happy. I give him the biggest thumbs up ever. Okay, I'm so glad he's our UPS guy because other companies won't take anything in here. Not for nothing. <laughs> and since I'm getting close to the 10 minute mark now, I am going to close this up. If you're still with us, if you watch this whole painful episode, give us a like, 
Uh, subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to my son's channel here, Amy too. Uh, he does a lot of work for me and helps me a lot. Good man, growing up. I'd also like you to subscribe to my woodworking channel, MFCP Woodworking. And if you really like my stuff, just run my playlist. It gives me lots of time on my, uh, my view minutes. Helps my channel a lot. I try to do the same for others. Anyway, we're gonna call this a trip. We'll be there shortly, but I don't wanna make this video 15 minutes long. So always remember time flies whether you're having fun or not. If you're ever going to Homestead off the grid like this, <coughs> do not forget that you have to drag everything in often by yourself. Thanks for listening.